Good morning, Alive Church. Yeah, it works a little better with the uh, battery and the mic. Thank you all for being here this morning. Yeah, there's any, anything different in here this morning? Anybody notice? We're giving thanks today for the donation of these uh, screens by Karen and Tim Ladd in memory of Paul Ladd. We're rejoicing too that there's more room up front now that the projector is out and so feel free to uh, thank you Jean and I wanted to give thanks to Jean, to Mark, to Nick, to anybody who's, oh Bob Brunner too and uh, whoever's been involved in this process and we're still working out the uh, the bugs because, you know, operator error, it's always, uh, it's always there. But we're glad that uh, that is a part of our worship now. And I also wanted to remind you of the Easter Cantata coming up this Holy Week on Saturday the 30th at the River Arts Center at 2 p.m. And uh, just wanted to say, even as we were practicing yesterday, hearts were moved. The people who are participating, um, hearts were moved. And so we expect that also as we gather to sing this and present this to our community. So um, I, I appreciate you, any support then, that you would come and, and be a part of that. Um, with that, let's go ahead and pray. Glorious God, we thank you for today. Thank you for your spirit that is alive and well in your church. We ask you, Lord, to bless this gathering in each soul, precious in your sight. Amen. Palm Sunday's gladness, a king on a donkey's back, comes with gentle grace, the people shout Hosanna as they gathered in his way. Hosannas, the people did sing as they praised the true King of Kings with prawn, palm prawns they wave. In their garments would pave the path for the one who holds all things. E -O, Jesus is the king. E -O, e -O. Hosanna, we will sing. Thank you. 
So as the kids do the processional this morning with the palms, we're going to sing the song that's in your bulletin. And, uh, and I invite you to, to remain seated. Do we have any fans of the race, the, the TV show? Well, this week, uh, this uh, mother and her son were one, two of the, or one of the teams. And as she was worn out and, and just having a rough time, she started singing this song, this song. And it was so, it was kind of neat. We recognized it, yep.
Let us stand and share the word. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is good, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in his hand, join in the fest festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Hosanna, say, Lord, save us. Let us celebrate the King. Let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's bringing the Sunday school offering up. Go ahead and pour it right in there. Okay, there's some more right there. Can you get there? Wow. One more right here? Great. Well, we are so glad for your giving hearts and your willingness to love and serve God and to put God first. And so we pray, Lord, your blessing on this. And I'm going to ask you kids, each of you, extend your hand towards this can of money as we bless it to God's purposes. God, we thank you. We thank you for the ways that you bless our lives and you, you invite us to, to return that portion, Lord, a portion that is a sign of our, of our love and dedication and need of you. So, Lord, bless these monies as they go to do 
uh, whatever specific work it is that they are intended for, and bless each of the kids as they contribute to your kingdom-building efforts. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. When, when he had said this, he breathed his last. The, the centurion seeing what he had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteousness man. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca, and Anna's help there too. Well, let's pray. Glorious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today we're continuing on our Lenten journey, focusing on those final seven phrases of Jesus as he hung on the cross, dying as his lifeblood was poured out for us. This week, today, we are uh, considering Jesus' final two statements, it is finished, and into your hands I commit my spirit. Now through these statements, Jesus conveys a prayer of absolute surrender and trust to his Father's will. Previously, remember, he had pleaded for forgiveness of those who had caused him such agony and grief. He had given hope to the repentant criminal as they hung alongside him. He secured the well-being of his mother and her long-term earthly care. Jesus endured the feelings of abandonment. He declared thirst for completing as he completed the will of his father and for completing the will of his father. And now Jesus declares a shout of triumph. Doesn't seem like it, but it is an absolute trust and security in his Father's will. Jesus, Son of Man, Son of God, took his last breath and surrendered his spirit. This prayer, into your hands I commit my spirit, that was a common Jewish prayer. And, and, Jews, and uh, Jews recited this as kids. They learned it as kids. Jesus was likely taught this prayer from his mother as he was growing up and and so he would have recited it. Any boys and girls would confess their dependence on Yahweh. It was meant to be a source of comfort to the child, especially when darkness or loneliness, uh, maybe even nighttime, frightened them. It was much like the prayer that maybe some of, some of you grew up learning as kids, to remind you that God is always with you. Remember that? Maybe you were taught this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And there's more to it. If I should live for other days, I pray the Lord to guide my ways. Amen. Any of you learned that as kids? I mean, I'm familiar with it, but it isn't something... Yeah, many of you did. 
sometimes I've looked at that prayer as being kind of morbid, uh, rather than one of acknowledgement of him who is a constant lover and overseer of my soul. It is almost 25 after. We are going to release our kids and our teachers, and we're going to release them with our blessing. God, we thank you. Thank you for those teachers committed to the encouragement and strengthening and the learning and the growing of spiritual uh, relationship with you. And we pray for that for our kids, that they would grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like I said, sometimes I've kind of seen that prayer as a little bit morbid, but, but part of it is probably because I don't experience and haven't experienced the precarious life in many ways that some people do around the world. I'm thinking of the people in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine. I don't really worry about where my next meal is coming from, as you can kind of tell. Um, but or even if there's going to be a bomb to land in my neighborhood. But if I did, I would, I would be more likely to, to pray at the end of the day a prayer like this for God's protection and watch over me and to, to remind myself that God is with me always. Jesus is the one who is with me. He is with you each moment of every day. Whether awake or asleep, he watches over our souls. This bedtime prayer is also one of commitment to live out the will of God for each moment of every day. Those words, if I should live for other days, I pray the Lord to guide my ways. Jesus' prayer might also have been seen as an encouragement to the believers in the face of a certain adversity that they were facing inviting his followers to always surrender to God what, what belongs to God and to be ready to serve him, whether we live or whether we die. That other phrase, it is finished, is actually only one word in Aramaic that Jesus spoke, and it's recorded in John's Gospel as finished. Will Willman has described these words of Jesus as something similar to what Michelangelo might have felt and said while looking up at the Sistine Chapel when he was finishing, when he was completing it. He might have said, finished. <laughs> but, but what was finished that day with Jesus as he gave up his spirit? There are a variety of atonement theories that describe what in fact Jesus' death accomplished or completed. A variety of metaphors try to explain how Jesus' death atones for our sin. A brief summary of John's Gospel reveals a number of these metaphors of how Jesus' death saves us. John speaks of Jesus' death as an atoning, and as we said, as a covering over, sacrifice that saves us from our sin. Or a substitutionary sacrifice or a demonstration of divine love for humanity, or a model of God's sacrificial love for us. It's a compelling portrait that stirs our hearts and stirs the hearts of humanity. It accomplished this dramatic reversal of events that began in the garden soon after creation, when Adam and Eve rebelled against God. Other Gospels add to the picture, Jesus is Redeemer, meaning that he buys us back, or a victor, or a transformer, or an overcomer, or a savior. He is our high priest, our Passover lamb, atoning lamb, our liberator, our king, who is willing to die for his people. For sure, his sacrifice reveals ex the extremity of our sin, the seriousness of it and the costliness of God's grace and magnitude of God's mercy. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, Jesus identifies with our pain, with our suffering, with our frailty, with our humanity. And he proved his ability to overcome sin and death 
and reconciles us to God as reborn sons and daughters of God. From 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for sins to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. As we've done in previous weeks, I'm going to share a story. Um, maybe this is what it looked like to the centurion that day. It was a job for angry men, men who had been abused as boys and those who were adept at compartmentalizing their work in the dark recesses of their mind when they came to the end of the day. We would, we would brutalize men, drive spikes into their hands and feet, gamble for their final earthly possessions, and watch them die. Then we would go home and have supper with our wives and children. It was about 8.30 in the morning when we led Jesus and the others to Calvary that day. I knew of Jesus. A friend stationed in Galilee told me how he had gone to Jesus and asked him to heal his servant. Jesus never even touched the servant. He merely spoke a word and the man was made well. My friend was convinced that was a miracle. My friend told me that Jesus would, was not like the typical would-be messiahs. He wasn't raising up an army to drive, out, drive us out of his country. He taught the people to love their enemies and to pray for those who would uh, harass them and to turn the other cheek when, when struck. I told my friend that we could use a few more like him in Judea, yet here he was, being marched to the skull, the place of crucifixion, and after being beaten and bloodied by men. As I looked at him, naked, the crown of thorns upon his brow for the first time in a long time, I felt a deep regret for what I was about to command my men to do. Yet this was my job, and he was just a Jew, pushing back any semblance of compassion from the recesses of my mind. I, I gave the order for them to nail him to the tree. I watched him throughout the day, listening as he spoke. He took that abuse that was hurled on him with dignity and with strength. It was as if he, with his crown of thorns, really was king, and we, his rebellious subjects, who, whose rebellion would soon put, put, be put to an end. Yet far from calling for our destruction, this king pled for our mercy. Remarkable. I watched as dark clouds rolled in at noon, an eerie feeling lingered for three hours. It was as if the heavens themselves were proclaiming the darkness of the deeds we were witnessing. Something was dreadfully wrong. Then a small earthquake shook the ground. Some people fled in fear, terrified this might be a sign from God. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out, I thirst. One of the religious leaders surprised me by breaking away from, from his colleagues and giving Jesus a drink. Then Jesus said, It is finished. What a strange thing to say as he approached his death. This was a cry of victory, a man successfully completing his mission. Just before he, he breathed his last, he gathered his strength pulled himself up by the nails in his wrists and said in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Then he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It was the most remarkable death I'd ever seen, and I'd seen many. I stood there looking at this man, and I was overwhelmed by, by a sense of fear. What had we done? I turned to my men and said to them, Surely this man was innocent. He was, as he claimed, the Son of God. For, 
And for the first time in years, I wept. As we declare victory over sin in our own life, as we remember that Jesus is the true victor, the one who declares it is finished, Jesus is the one who is with you, he is with me every moment, every day, whether awake or asleep, he watches over my soul, my eternal soul. If you should die before your next breath or, or tomorrow morning or, or next week or whenever, know that the Lord Jesus Christ will not forsake or fail those who are his. And if life should go on longer than you had hoped, commit yourself to doing his will and, and trust him to guide you in all your ways. Either way, death or life, into his hands we commit our spirit. Let's pray together. God, as we recount again those dreadful days, the torture, the, the humility, the rejection that you endured on our behalf, we give thanks. Lord, it brings us to that point of repentance, seeking the forgiveness that you, you died for, the reconciliation that you enabled us to have with you, our God. So this morning, as we, we recollect and as, as your spirit speaks to our hearts, we pray that we would surrender to you, our very being. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together, O love divine, what hast thou done? Number 287.
This is our time of corporate prayer and praise to God, and we lift one another up in praise for the goodness that he has uh, extended to us and mercy and grace, and also for, for those as we struggle with the issues of life. Um. Well, let us join our voices, let us join our praises to God as we lift up one another. Lord, in your wisdom, you have created humanity, physical bodies, mental, emotional persons, eternal spiritual persons. God, we are dependent on you and your grace and your mercy for each breath that we take. Lord, thank you for the, the ways that you have answered prayers and responded uh, to the calls of your people as we lift up one another. God, there are a variety of ways that many of us are struggling with physical, mental, emotional, spiritual challenges, and we know that you are mindful of each and every one of those things, and we are just humbled by the fact that you are willing to, to intervene and to act on our behalf and, and to dwell with us. Thank you, Jesus. We pray now that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and we as God, your disciples, here in this hour, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand and receive the Lord's blessing. And after we conclude today, there will be extra palms. If you would like to have a palm in your household or two, please come forward and grab some of those. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you, he is faithful, and he will do it. Go now in that love, that joy, that peace of Christ to love God and serve his world. Amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. <laughs>